While meteorology researchers take to the field like a new generation of explorers, weather forecasters are simultaneously developing essential new tools, without which no predictions could be made. Since 1975, the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts in Reading, UK, has been revolutionising the world of weather forecasting, thanks to its supercomputers. We have about 20 cabinets here, so 2 times 10 cabinets. Uh, and per cabinet, we have off the order of 200 compute nodes, altogether roughly 130,000 cores per cluster. So it's a 260,000 core system that we're running here. How is it possible to predict weather events in a country or region? For the meteorologists in Reading, this involves dividing the globe into segments, like an orange. They have mapped virtual squares, like the holes in a net. Initially, these squares were 210 kilometers across, but a few years later, they were reduced to 125 kilometers and then 62 kilometers. The atmosphere was also divided into columns and then into horizontal layers, like the floors in a skyscraper. The more precise this geographical segmentation becomes, the higher the resolution of the mathematical model and the better the predictions for each of these little earthly zones. So if you translate what we do today, like a, a nine kilometer forecast, we have uh, 137 levels vertically. Nine kilometers, kilometers translate to six and a half million grid points times 137 levels times 10 prognostic variables. That translates to something like nine billion updates of variables every time step we do a calculation. And with our time step, uh, a 10 day forecast takes about 2,000 time steps, so you do these updates of 9 billion parameters 2,000 times. It is crazy, but it's the problem we have to solve. Nowadays, computers are some of the most important tools used by scientists. The billions of calculations they are able to make helps better quantify interactions between the Earth, the atmosphere and the oceans. But some phenomena are still not very well measured, which results in lower quality predictions. One might think that to do weather forecasting, you just have to sample the atmosphere and the evolution of that atmosphere will be enough. But the atmosphere interacts with everything, the earth, the oceans, sea ice, and even tiny particles of ozone or aerosols in the atmosphere. And all of that isn't taken into consideration in our models. So we are driving this concept of coupling, of interaction between the different components that we call our earth system. For example, Clouds are one of the phenomena that are so difficult to understand. They are part of our daily lives, but are one of the main sources of uncertainty in our forecasting models. Clouds produce rain. They give rise to storms. And they travel great distances. But the story of these huge fluffy formations, from their creation to their eventual dissipation, is full of unknowns. In one of the laboratories of Meteo France in Toulouse, a team is developing a new kind of laser. These lasers are able to count the number of drops of rain in a cloud and detect their volume and concentration. Cyril Dangean is particularly interested in very small particles in suspension in the air, without which there would be no clouds over the Earth, aerosols. These particles, which range from just a few microns to a few millimeters across, allow water vapor to transform into droplets. 
Aerosols have many sources. Some are naturally emitted into the atmosphere, such as desert dust from the great deserts around the world. Then there are aerosols that come from the oceans, what we call marine salts. There are also aerosols that come from plants, which are organic aerosols, and then there are other aerosols that stem from human activity. To better understand the role of aerosols, Cyril Danjean has had to find a special place where some very different air masses converge, bringing a range of different aerosols with them. She has decided to set up an aerosol trap in the Pyrenees, at more than 2,800 meters above sea level, on the summit of the Pic du Midi mountain. I'm particularly interested in black carbon aerosols that come from pollution linked to human activity. Black carbon aerosols are really upsetting our climate. Been emitted into the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution by factories, airplanes, cars, and wood burned for heating. And until now, studies of them have been relatively limited. We are now interested in these particles because we have realized they may play a critical role in the life cycle of clouds. If that's the case, then this could be very serious because black carbon aerosols come from human activity. And if human emissions increase, there could be an even greater concentration of black carbon in the atmosphere, which in turn could change the quantity of clouds in the atmosphere. But that's not all. These aerosols also have a secondary effect on the clouds. They warm the earth by absorbing sunlight. And this hike in temperature encourages the evaporation of water droplets in the clouds. Because of this absorbency, black carbon is changing the temperature of the atmosphere and playing a key role in the end of life of clouds by making them disappear. The effects of black carbon aerosols around the planet is still mainly a mystery to us today. 